What's up guys? Welcome back to the Matt Greer Music Channel. So, I am finally back in my studio, or I should say I'm able to get back into my studio, and uh, I'm really thankful for that. If you don't know, I had an injury, I've been stuck sitting on my couch with my leg elevated in the air for like six weeks now. Uh, I'm finally to a point where I can I can sit upright and I can sit at a desk and it's it's been good for, for my work life as well as it's I'm just happy to be back in my happy place. I fell uh, and I fell from about five and a half feet. I'll try to put the metric equivalent in the corner or something um, but I, it was an above ground pool and it, I fell off the top rung ladder of that pool and I fell onto a concrete slab. I was barefoot, obviously, because I was swimming. And all of my weight, which is a little heavier than it should be right now, went straight into my left heel bone. Uh, my ankle went into it and basically broke it apart like a rock into multiple pieces. So not fun, not fun at all. I had to have surgery. I've got a bunch of screws and stuff in there for that. So, yikes. My but, dog's trying to give me his squeaky toy right now. Give me that. Give me that. Since I am back in my space, I thought it would be fun to kind of do a studio tour 2022. Yeah, I'm just gonna kind of scoot around in here, uh, show you what I have and give you my thoughts and comments on them. But yeah, as always, thanks for watching and we'll get started. Okay, so this is really the, the main workstation of this studio. This is where I sit when I'm doing like complete track work, um, multi-tracking, mixing, mastering, putting full songs together, working in the box, in the DAW basically. Um, as you can see, there's still plenty of hardware instruments around that. That's because uh, I don't really use a lot of VSTs, not instruments anyway. I do, I do like plug in effects and use quite a few of those, but I don't really use instruments because why have all this hardware if you're not going to use it to make music with? Uh, I do put out albums, I do put out, you know, formal projects, and this is where I do most of that. So let me zoom in here. Uh, just a little bit of what's here, you know, I've got my uh, Launch Control XL. I've got that um, program to work with my doll with the faders and, and, and all those knobs and everything. A couple synths here. I've got my uh, Boutique VPO3 favorite vocoder I've ever had. Um, and I've had quite a number of them. Uh, this one is to me by far the most intelligible vocoder I've had. Uh, you can actually tell what I'm saying or singing, I should say, through this one. I've put up examples of it before. There's a ton of it on the album that I released in July. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, if you're ever curious about how well you can understand it, please check out that music. I would love you to. There's my Boutique JU06A. I uh, really like this little synth. I use mostly the 60 uh, component of it and not the 106. I used to have a real 106, actually, and it just never really clicked with me. Uh, I sold it to a buddy of mine. so. Hope you're still enjoying it, Jesse, if you're watching. Uh, Basic Printer is his band, if you're curious, you should check them out. Um, <clears throat> but I do like the 60 quite a bit, and I use it uh, a lot. It was on a number of tracks in my most recent album as well. Uh, and then we've got my Digitone and Digitact. These are all over that record. Again, not a ton of jams on my channel, but I do use it. Uh, my MPC-1, this probably is the best standalone piece of hardware and I have in my whole studio. I am continually astounded by how deep and how many options this product can provide. It's incredible. Uh, next to it, I've got the Electron Rhythm. Don't use it a ton. I do use the analog drum voices and I often layer those behind other drum voices in tracks just to kind of beef them up. My Analog 4, which I use for ARP riffs and leads. Uh, not too much bass, but I do like the sort of rich harmonic characteristics the synths get, so I, it's real brassy. I like a lot of that. Over here, we've got my Roland MV8800, and then we've got some things in the racks like a mic pre, some patch bays, um, a compressor, my interface, a MIDI splitter, a couple other compressors up there, and yeah, that's kind of my main workstation uh, right here we've got a 
Roland D20. Um, I got this right before I got hurt and sadly have still not ever been able to use it. Um, it's really heavy and I just kind of can't deal with it at the moment, which is unfortunate. Back there, a whole bunch of guitar pedals in a pile, a couple little Casio keyboards from the 80s. Um, there's my live in synthesizers. I have the XFM, the Bass and Beats, and the 8 bit Warps. Um, if you're wondering, I think the XFM is definitely the best of the three. And back in the corner here is just a hodgepodge of guitar cases, a kalimba, um, digital recorders, an MPC 2500. Uh, I feel kind of bad about that just laying around, but there it is. Um, okay, over here is essentially, I don't want to say it's my analog, but most of this is analog synth station. Uh, I've also got a machine drum there. That's my favorite drum machine in the whole studio. It's just real solid workhorse, very versatile, and uh, it sounds great. Back there, that's a first generation mono machine. No, it's not for sale. Um, <laughs> I've got a, uh, I've got a micro Moog. I actually inherited this from my wife's uncle. It's older than I am. I'm not going to tell you the year. <laughs> Uh, and I've got a, uh, a, a Moog, um, what the hell is this? A Sub Fatty. Yeah, and I use that mostly for bass because, duh, that's sort of what it's for. Uh, we've got the MS-20. Love the leads that this thing gets. So rich, so fuzzy, so creamy. It's got this old, like, 70s flavor, and uh, I really dig the way that sounds and tracks. Also appears quite a bit on my recent album. The BS2, very, very solid workhorse. I think every studio should have one of these. And then I've got this Mackie kind of mixer there to sort of route those things uh, from all this hardware over to this patch bay, which I can then, you know, send into different channels of my DAW through the interface, stuff like that. A uh, little corner over here, I've got uh, a couple drum machines. There's an Oberheim DX. There's a Yamaha RX-15. Some people hate that drum machine. I, I get where you're coming from, but if you need that cheesy 80 sound, does it great, man. Um, there's my amp. A buddy of mine built that cabinet and it's an Ignator tube amp head. And then I've got some, let's see, that's my little key step. I got a little Volca, Volca rig back there. And uh, that's an old Yamaha keyboard from the 80s uh, there's a Yamaha it's kind of dark but I'll try to lighten it up there we go Yamaha CP 10 from the 70s it's sort of like a early stage piano it's more like a divide down organ though doesn't really sound anything like a piano to be honest that's an old uh, chord organ if you're wondering what this thing with the M on it it is um, right now it's a light bulb holder because one of the keys is broken and it just sustains forever and having a high pitch or accordion sound just sustain is kind of annoying. Um, bear with me as I wheel around here. Yay. This section here, this is more, I guess you could call this kind of more the hip hop world. I uh, got a little MPC 500 down there, spare patch bay. There's the turntable I use in my studio. I just use it for sampling. I really don't play records in here. Um, I've got my uh, DeepMind 12. I've turned that on maybe three times in two years. I just just don't care about it. But uh, if I sell it, I can't really get any money out of it either. So it's like here at six. I should have known. It's way too similar to a Juno 106. And I just don't dig the sounds. Plus every preset is just, I don't know, buried in gobs of effects that I just find a bit cheesy as well. Uh, up here, this little Korg uh, DJ mixer got a chaos pad and sub pad samplers on it don't use it for much other than just kind of converting the photo signal into things that I can use with these samplers um, <clears throat> SP202 the 404SX and the SP555 now I've got basically every SP except for the mark II because I refuse to pay uh, scalper prices for it uh, maybe when it comes out normal and I can get it easily Maybe you can find a deal, I'll, I might grab one, but for now I'm satisfied with these. But if you're wondering, um, this one is my favorite one to make beats on. Maybe this one, but for some reason I, I guess I still just kind of like this one. It was also the first one I ever got and I just sort of sort of love it. Um, but if you're wondering what the one I use for processing the most, it's that under there. It's that SP-808. It uh, has so many awesome processing effects and I love just building tracks 
even on other gear just to sample to that and then run processing algorithms on those tracks just the whole thing not even multi-track just the the whole dang beat and it just does such a good job of adding character to stuff um i guess that is about it and this is actually where i work like my day job um and when I first started doing this, yeah, it was a little hard to ignore the studio behind me, but now I'm used to it. I can I can compartmentalize a few odds and ends on here. There's a micro granny sampler and a limited edition Third Man Records PO33. Um, and then I've got my uh, Zoom, uh, what is that called, Q8, I think, with a couple different mics. I use it for making videos. Uh, again, I'm a little limited on what I can do at the moment. That is pretty much it, guys. So, you know, if there's anything you want to know about uh, in here, I know I didn't talk about literally every little knob and gizmo in this space, but uh, it gives you a pretty good sense of what I have and what I do with it. You can certainly check out my music. Um, yeah, and I'll mention it again. I did put out an album at the end of July, literally the same day I broke my foot. So, awesome. Um, but uh, I, I worked on that album since like 2016, so a lot of work went into that record, and I would be very, very happy if you took some time to check it out. It's, I'll put a Bandcamp link down in the description, but um, it's on Spotify, it's on Tidal, it's on iTunes, it's on Amazon Music, any streaming platform you can think of, please check it out. Uh, I would be very, very happy. I'm very proud of it. Um, it's quite a bit more in-depth than the like little sketches and jams that I put on my channel. Like there's songs, there's vocals, there's guitars. So yeah, I have guitars. Um, and there's quite a bit going on. Um, I feel like it's my most mature and detailed work. And literally I worked on it for six years. So um, yeah, would love to, love to have you check it out. If you don't like it, that's cool. But um, I don't know, just as a pride point, it would make me happy if you, if you wanted to give it a listen. All right, guys, that is it for today. Thank you for watching, and uh, always thank you for the support, for the well wishes, uh, for everything that you guys do to, to watch and support this channel. It means a ton to me, uh, especially in these past you know, month and a half where I've been pretty depressed, to be honest. Um, it's really been nice to be able to get on here and interact with my friends uh, here in the music community. So thank you so much. I will see you later. Bye-bye.